I'd like, Joseph, because you've picked this topic, you to give us an idea about what sort of abuse you're talking about. Well, abuse basically is form of abusing power over someone in terms of the person gives you a boss abuses his employees because the employees depend on their salaries. A husband abuses his wife because they are married together. A parent abuses their child because the child doesn't the what you call the standing to fight back. And you then have typical daily abuse on social media where people who either have been hurt previously in their lives then only get their sense of identity, their sense of accomplishment from hurting other people. And so mm. it's kind of like a transference situation where you have hurt people hurting people. So Go. it's for the looking at those traits, it's basically to say that just because you have a certain authority or you have a certain power, you have one a certain mindset over someone else, a professor, we've heard stories of over here, professors abusing their powers on students, taking favors, sexual favors, just to get them to pass exams. Really? It's, it's the norm here, Jonathan, I'm not, <gasps> this, is, this is the truth of it. So you have girls who are going through, they can't say anything to anybody because the lecturer yeah. controls your entire semester course. So then they then have to live with the fact that I need to say either yes and pass or say no and basically repeat a year. So that's the bad sides of this whole thing. So you have people, you have the certain power, yes, but that doesn't give you the rights to disrespect somebody else's human dignity. People have rights to being treated as people. They have the right to self-respect. They have the right to self-esteem. So you basically have rights to be treated as normal human beings, not regardless of who they are or what they have. Mm. So that's where we're hoping to look into, trying to discover how to notice who these people are. Because so, once you get into a relationship with somebody like this, it's kind of difficult to come out of it in the first place without getting injured. So... Uh, let me ask some of the other members, and I'll start with you, Shivani, if I may, because Joseph said it's about power. And yes. so tell, tell me your perspective on that. So when we talk about abuse, abuse, let's try and understand the scope of abuse. It can be a physical abuse where someone would abuse you physically. They would cause physical damage to you. Mm. A lot of domestic abuse cases we hear of. Then there's an emotional abuse, which is something that now is getting a lot of prevalence where someone would abuse you, but it would do it in an emotional way. As in this person would try and make you isolated from your friends, from people who are your well wishes, mm -hmm. then gradually try and take control over you and make sure that your happiness is dependent on them. Right. And that's the time they would work on your self-esteem, make sure that your self-esteem is lowered and you act as per the whims and fancies of this particular person. So that is a kind of abuse which has a lot of impact on a person because the scars tend to remain over a longer period of time. Mm. In physical abuse, what would happen is you would get scarred, but then those scars tend to heal. Mental abuse, the damage is done for a much longer period of time. And then the most pervasive of all abuse is the online abuse, where it is so easy to get behind a gadget and say nasty things to a person just because I can. Mm. So these are the three kind of abuses that we have. All of them have different ramifications. However, I feel the mental abuse that happens is the most difficult to uncover the true damage of it and then help the person get over the trauma. So... In your work with uh, prevention of sexual harassment at work, yes, that is direct power over someone. Got it. I guess. Yeah. Okay. So, Joseph, I had no idea it was like that as a, as a college student. So, FIFO, you're at college. 